Hey guys, Cast72 here. Hope everyone's doing well. Um, today's video I want to share with you guys is on my uh, 250 Virago. I want to go ahead and change the incandescent instrument cluster, or I should say the speedometer uh, backlight to a blue LED, kind of like an indigo light. I just think it'll add some color to it at night when I'm riding. Um, you know, the typical, you know, incandescent type light is just kind of, uh, you know, it's not, to me, it doesn't, I guess I'm so bored of seeing it, you know, that it's kind of boring. So I just kind of want to add some color to the, to the bike at night when it's lit up. Just like when I changed the front headlight from, again, the, uh, incandescent type yellowish light to uh, a more clean, crisp white light. Um, it just, like in my opinion, to me, it just makes the bike look a little bit more unique. So that's what we're going to be doing today, guys. Uh, hope you all enjoy the video, and let's go ahead and get started. So, guys, what I'm referencing here is the uh, speedometer on my Virago. Um, the backlight is um, kind of like a yellowish uh, incandescent light, and I kind of want to give it a little bit of life or, you know, just make it look a little bit more unique. As I said before, I've already changed on the front headlight. This used to be also incandescent, which is yellow. Um, and I changed it to a real crisp, almost like a white, real light white blue type um, headlight. And I, think that, and I think that gave it a lot of uh, change as far as it, its appearance uh, at nighttime when riding. Um, but yeah, I wanna go ahead and do the speedometer today. So the video is going to be on me taking this whole entire unit out, uh, opening it up, and of course making sure I don't uh, tear the rubber seal here that prevents you know it from getting water or moisture inside the um, the glass, the display. And pretty much all you're going to need is your typical Allen wrench set, um, and the two screws located for that are going to be underneath. I'll see if I can get a. A visual for you guys on that it's gonna be a little dark see if my camera can pick up on that uh, let's see and I might need to zoom in a bit okay there's one of them right there I'll point to it uh, right there that's gonna be one and then on the other side it's gonna have one pretty much in the same exact location and I don't know if y'all can see that. I'm gonna try to focus on that, but it's right there, which is, um, see if I can point to that as well without getting my hand in the way. Uh, that screw right there, or that, you know, Allen wrench uh, type screw right there. And basically what that does is it'll release this entire, let me zoom back out, uh, this whole assembly. And then from there we can dismantle the speedometer, open it up, and see what we got to work with on that. So yeah, let's uh, let's go ahead and get that started. So guys, I want to show you real quick that. Um, I started off with the Allen wrench, uh, but there was a little bit hard trying to get in this, that little corner right there with this headlight. So I swapped it over to uh, this socket. Um, let's see where I can focus here. This socket Allen wrench, which helped do the job a lot easier. Uh, in case you guys are wondering, it was a five millimeter. Um, if you happen to have this same motorcycle and you plan on changing the LED or working on the instrument, or I should say the speedometer for any reason, uh, it's a five millimeter um, size. Um, so with that being said, let me just take this camera over here because I want to show you now um, that once, now that we got that off, um, as you can see, the whole thing just comes loose. And what we're going to want to do here is there's the speedometer cable underneath. 
which is, again, I'll try to zoom in and see if I can show you guys. Um, this might not be the perfect angle, but it's this, it's this one right here. And what, what it is, is it's basically just kind of a, there you go. You can see the thread. You just basically unscrew that and then you'll have the whole entire um, speedometer uh, off and you can add, we can open it up at that point. So let me go ahead and take care of that and then I'll come back when we're ready to um, you know mess with the light lightning side. So let me just mount this back again. And boy, don't you just hate it when you have to move the camera because then you got to try to get back in focus and all that good stuff. So that's about that's about good right there. Raise it up just a tad. All right. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, mess with that thing now. And again, we'll go back to time lapse. Okay guys, and now with that being done, that gives you full access to the entire speedometer. And here's your speedometer cable. And that basically was threaded and inserted here, and of course that just determines your speed. Now the reason why I'm bringing the camera here next to this is because I want to show you the next thing we got to do is take that screw off and um, this should release the housing from this top portion and then we can look inside and see um, what kind of bulb we're looking at and all that good stuff. So let me go ahead and mount the camera again and we'll, we'll proceed. I won't do time lapse on this part because it's just one screw. It shouldn't take me that long. Uh, the reason why I time lapse, guys, is I, I don't want you to get bored, you know, so making the videos long. So I kind of just try to speed them up. You guys let me know if that's working for you because if you'd rather be, be very thorough, I could do that. But um, I think, you know, with what I'm doing, you guys get the gist of it and then you can go from there. So there we go. I don't want to lose that screw. Okay. And now we could And so guys, I wanted to show you um the original bulb that was in there. If you ever opened up a Christmas tree um, light, you know, when they burn out and you pull them out of their little socket that the kind of lights to go around the Christmas tree, that's kind of what this is actually, believe it or not. Uh, but we're going to replace it with the LED, which I'll show you here in a minute. <clears throat> and then we'll go ahead and continue the video. And uh, yeah, like I said, this is an incandescent, very dim kind of yellowish hue to it it doesn't really look all that great kind of old school style bulbs so we're going to just upgrade that now and put in a nice blue led indigo light so uh but yeah this is uh this is the old one just wanted to share that with y'all all right guys and so guys i want to show you the new led that i'll be replacing here and as before, like I showed you on the old unit, the only modification they've done is the type of bulb. Whereas uh, you can see the two prongs are similar to the original LED. I'm sorry, bulb. But here's the difference. These are now LEDs. Uh, the significant difference in that is the fact that uh, it uses very low voltage. And also uh, it emits a brighter, um, a brighter light. So... I'll see if I can zoom in on this for you guys. Yeah. That's about as good as that's going to get. 
So this one, you can get them in different colors. You know, they got red, yellow, blue, green, um, white, uh, bright white, I should say. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get this installed now. I just wanted to show you guys that. Um, but yeah, this is the new one and I'll just go ahead and uh, get started. So enjoy the rest of the video. Okay guys, and here's the end result. We've got our LED installed and now it's just a matter of putting everything back together and showing you guys the end result. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that next. Alright guys. Okay guys, so I got it all back together except for the headlight. And the reason for that is I want to show you guys something here. Uh, again, if you happen to have a Virago or a bike with a similar type of light setup, um, if you notice from the top, right, uh, and if I zoom in, you can see where all the electronic cables go into the top head assembly of this um, headlight. Well, when it rains, you know, water's obviously going to go into there. And then what it does, or what it should do, is if the wiring's proper and not up against the back of the headlight, the water will pretty much come down and seep out of this tiny little crease that they put on here, that little tiny crease. Now, it seems to function properly, but the problem that you see with that is if you look at the, the brace that controls the uh, adjustment for the headlight you can see where all that water collects underneath and then there's the hole in which the water is supposed to come out well obviously it collects as you can see causing rust and this is a chrome piece of metal it can pretty much badly deteriorate it um, rot it away and rust it out which it's already starting to do so what I'm gonna do here um, again I'll just do it really quick and then come back with the end result I'm going to scuff this down really good with a little bristle brush, um, probably brass or steel. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to layer a nice uh, thin coat of grease, um, just kind of like a, a wax buildup type, if you will. I'm not going to put it on very thick. It's just enough to put a nice grease barrier uh, on underneath the, the bottom portion of this. And the reason for that is so that the water will beat up, bead, as in B-E-A-D, and fall itself down into that hole as, oppo as opposed to just collecting there and drying up over time. Um, that's just a little advice if you guys happen to have this kind of a headlight um, that'll help that problem. Now I was thinking on using some foam that I have that's water resistant, cut it to the square shape of the opening on the headlight and seal that up. The problem with that guys is there's a purpose for that being open just as you can see it being open on the bottom um, right there aside from the most obvious yes it's for cabling but also these particular lights heat up and they need to ventilate so that's what those openings are for to help um, dissipate the heat um, so yeah I just wanted to share that with you guys let me go ahead and get that done real quick and then I'll show you the end result of what I was talking about. Okay. Okay guys and then here's the end result. Um, I went ahead and steel brushed it and then I also went ahead and uh, let me see if I can get some better lighting. Hold on. There we go. Um, so I used a steel brush and some steel wool and I really worked on getting as much rust as I can. That was the heaviest part right there as you can tell. But you can also see the real thin film of grease that I put on the inner part of the uh, trim. So like I said well that, what that will do is prevent that from happening any further and basically the water will bead up. It will bead and then fall into that little opening that you see right there that little hole uh, which is what it's supposed to do. 
Um, so yeah, that's just a little tip for you guys in case you all have that type of headlight. You all can uh, do the same thing um, and prevent the rust from building and pretty much messing up the, uh, the chrome trim around the light. So yeah, just a tidbit for the video. Alright guys, let's continue.